your entire career. Um, <laughs> speaking of, of Instagram and National Geographic being the number one, um, and this is a question for both of you actually. Have you personally found over the course of your careers, you know, seeing where it came from, where it is today, the proliferation of digital imagery and the saturation of imagery in the market, has that made it easier or harder for a single image to come out and quote unquote change the world? Great question. You want to Take that um, one first, I have a yeah. slightly different answer. I mean, <laughs> my view is that, um, you know, as you rightly said, there's all these millions, but there's also millions of text messages flying around. And uh, we don't think of them as great literature or whatever. I mean, uh, <laughs> the pictures that are flying around are important, they're great, they're friends, family, uh, go out to dinner, you go to a party. Uh, but uh, you're still texting about those same things. I'm mean, here at dinner with, you know, and we're, you know. Um, but who, although they have the wherewithal, who, who's writing a poem or a short story or a film script or a novel? We could all do it the same way the people with the cell phone pictures, and I'm a great component of cell phone pictures, but uh, they're not, we, we, people could go out and do a great photo essay with their cell phone, but most people don't, the same way they don't write a poem or, or write a short story. So I, I don't, I mean, I, I think it's great that everybody's photographing their cell phone. I do it I, on the subway. I go to my studio every day. I'm, I'm photographing people sitting next to me. I don't ask permission. But I, <laughs> 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 um, I, I mean, from, a, from my vantage point, running media organizations, it's a, it's a liberating time, but incredibly scary. I mean, I think this is a time of the most disruption we've ever had. And as a friend of mine said, those of us who are trying to run media organizations are competing against every piece of content ever invented in the history of humankind, from a cat video to Gone, to gone with the Wind on a, on a uh, on a nightly basis, and that is just tough. I mean, our our world is filled with clutter, and the real question becomes how, and each of us are building our own individualized networks through our tablets or phones or what have you. So the question for National Geographic or, or, any, or the New York Times or anyone else is gonna be how do we get onto these individualized networks now, because we are really in a disruptive era where people are more reluctant to pay for content. And, and what we struggle with is the ability to pay brilliant artists, which we have to do because they are, Steve is National Geographic. They can replace executives, but Steve and his colleagues are National Geographic the same way uh, the reporters of NPR are NPR or the Muppets of Sesame Street are, <laughs> or se is what Sesame Street is. So it is about talent and how do we find ways in which we can monetize that so these incredibly talented people can do their work. And that's what all of these media organizations are really challenged by in the 21st century. It's just not easy answers, but we're, various people are trying different things every day and as you're reading and uh, it will work its way through and genius will emerge and uh, we are convinced of that. Thank you. Yes, this gentleman here. 